This is the theme of Setback and Misery, Annie's textbook, Select Frames. So then uh, Paul uh, has managed to uh, roll himself to uh, the living room where the um, photo album is out. And to me, this is, a, it's, this is just an automatic trap. And he's not thinking logically, of course, right? But this is really a trap to have the book opened, I mean, have the photo album album open right to the information about Paul Sheldon and how he's presumed dead. And I feel like she left this out for him so that he could lose heart, that no one is really looking for you in a way, so you might as well go on ahead and stay here let it go let's just stay here so she doesn't want to let him go and we see the picture of the car right we see the headlines and then that uh, the car was found buried in the snow so again i feel like this is a trap so paul sheldon is now reading annie so this is in contrast or maybe comparison to buster reading about paul uh, paul sheldon learning about paul sheldon this is the true first time that Paul is is uh, maybe just by happenstance um, forcing himself to learn about his captor right this person who has who is keeping him captive right that like like Buster who is reading a reading the equivalent of a textbook this photo album album is the equivalent of a textbook and Paul Sheldon is finally learning about who Annie Wilkes really is. So we get a picture of Annie um, um, when she is young, right? Um, and so you wonder then, how is it that this young person who is definitely hopeful uh, with the world at her fingertips, how does she turn into the person who then kills newborn babies? Or, or I believe who actually killed her husband, or who is now trapping uh, a well, a well-renowned, noted author in her home, and then later is going to use physical violence and kill the sheriff, and uh, do all that she can to try to keep Paul Sheldon. How did this person? Because this person looks like is is uh, history is in Annie's history. It represents Annie in her history. And so I'm quite sure there is something in Annie uh, that was much more promising than growing up to become a murderer. So we now have uh, a newspaper article about Carl Wilkes. And I have a little bit of a correction that I didn't note. I do remember saying something about Annie's husband and how she says when he left her, and I I just assume that Annie uh, actually killed her husband because when you think about Annie, she doesn't let anybody leave her. Uh, eventually, that person ends up you know dying some kind of way. She didn't she she didn't start killing you know so to speak uh, with. Um, with the sheriff, right? Or attempt killing with Paul. She must have had some practice. And so Carl Wilkes is not actually her husband. Uh, it, it is her father. And uh, this is a write-up. Annie was 11 at this time. And if you look at the third paragraph, uh, beginning in what is being viewed, in what is being viewed as a freak accident by police, Carl Wilkes was found lying dead this afternoon after apparently suffering fatal injuries caused by his falling down a stairway at his home. Mr. Wilkes was found dead by his daughter, Annie, 11, who then phoned authorities. And so you have to uh, wonder, so how did he, how did he fall dead downstairs? I think Annie was the one who actually pushed him. I don't know how she got it in it in her uh, to kill her father. Now, my assumption is not validated by this particular newspaper article. The article already suggests that he was found lying dead uh, by a freak accident down the stairs. Um, but remember, at the end of the film, 
and he shoots Buster in the back. And he falls down the, uh, the basement stairs. So again, she doesn't just, just all of a sudden come up with ways to kill somebody. There has been some kind of practice that she has been doing. So uh, this is part of Annie's past as well. And so then we have another newspaper article, top nursing student falls to her death. Classmates shocked after freak mishap. And similarly to Annie's father, she uh, falls down, a, she trips and falls down a flight of stairs. Now she's a top nursing student in terms of uh, honors. Uh, uh, she was in a training rotation at the UCLA Medical Center. So it was the School of Nursing. And she was supposed to return test results to her supervising physician, but somehow she tripped and fell down the stairway. Well, this again is reminiscent of her father. This cannot be a coincidence. And Annie is one of the nursing students along with her. You know, this picture that you see of two people uh, trying to pull at a doll, right? Um, two babies or two kids or something like that. It's really, rem it's really um, indicative of Annie. You know, if you think about the top nursing student, she has the higher honor of being a top nursing student. So Annie wants it. And the only way that she's going to get it is if the girl, Lisa Marie Duncan, falls to her death. Okay, Annie wants Paul's book. She tries to take ownership ownership of it when Buster is suspicious and comes to the house. And she's claiming that all of the work that Paul had done was her work, right? So Annie wants to be on top. She wants to be the priority. She wants to be the one who receives the praise. So the doll, when it comes to her relationship with uh, Paul Sheldon, is his book, is his misery, really. For all intents and purposes, Annie believes that misery is truly her work. It is her book. She, I don't think she thinks she's a reader anymore. That somehow she miraculously wrote that book. So then uh, Annie Wilkes garners na uh, nursing school honor. So she kills someone and she gets the person's honor. So she graduates with honors from the UCLA nursing program. And she has now accepted a job in the elderly care unit of, of that particular hospital. And it also references how Annie was valedictorian of her high school. And so then you wonder, um, did she kill someone there as well? But somehow um, the person who had honors no longer has honor, and it is Annie who has honor. So Paul is continually reading Annie, reading about her history, learning about her, and it sort of bothers him. And it's, you know, you wouldn't think that just reading someone's photo album, some clippings, newspaper clippings would bother you. I mean, it's just, okay, she was, she was in nursing school, somebody in her um, uh, class died, and then she graduated with honors. I mean, you wouldn't think to make any connections other than what you see on the page. But something about it is bothering Paul. And then Annie Wilkes uh, heads the intensive care unit. Essentially, the newspaper article is just about how um, Annie uh, is being introduced as, as a member of the staff at the hospital. And she's going to head the uh, intensive care unit. And there's just other information about how to resolve any debates, um, things like that. And then we have um, Annie, um, sort of, there are two types of news clippings here. There's one that's a veteran pediatrician dies while in coma at local hospital, and then Wilkes named County's head maternity nurse.
I often wonder why she put these two news clippings together. It's interesting that she would put these as if there is some sort of relation that a local pediatrician with his wife dies uh, in a car that was struck head on and that he had remained in a coma. Um, the driver of the other ve uh, vehicle who was legally drunk escaped serious injury. And that's one of the things I, I always note. I have an actual YouTube audio about this, that the, junk, that the drunk driver never gets killed, meaning that everyone in the car dies, uh, pedestrians die, everyone in other car, um, another car coming the opposite direction dry, um, dies, but the drunk driver never gets killed. And so this could be a literal drunk driver as indicated in this um, newspaper clipping, but it also could be someone drunk on their own vanity, drunk on their own narcissism drunk on their own ways of handling problems. You know, when I ask, why do people use a gun to resolve problems? Uh, I'm also asking, why does Annie kill anybody to solve problems? Uh, we don't know for certain if it's Annie who was in the opposite car who struck the driver. And plus, uh, there is some indication that the drunk, uh, the driver of the other vehicle who was legally drunk escaped serious injury but the person is not named. But then we have in the other newspaper clipping how she is made head maternity nurse. And so uh, this veteran pediatrician, and now she's head maternity nurse, uh, is something, I don't know if we should think about it, uh, but there's, there's a card in remembrance, and why would she create a card for something that may not have been um, connected to her directly. So there must have been some connection to her. And then now we have the baby deaths. So baby Lucy dies after five weeks struggle in hospital. Parents are distraught over the death of their child. And so, um, and this happens, this basically happens once Annie has become head, head maternity nurse. So the baby was essentially born prematurely. Uh, the mother had to have a C-section and she began hemorrhaging. Uh, the baby was delivered, but put on a heart lung machine. And that lasted until the baby's lungs could strengthen. And, when, and then uh, for her to be able, able to be taken off the machine, she, however, remained in an incubator until her death. And so the baby was born with an acute cardiomyopathy and she fought for survival for five weeks. Um, and then her heart gave out and the doctors were unable to resuscitate her. So the time period, it looks like she was able to survive in the incubator, uh, but somehow maybe someone intervened to either take her out of the incubator or uh, unplug something or whatever, but it doesn't seem like that she would have that she would not have been able to make it as long as she stayed in the incubator. So the incubator is the uh, key, right? Because um, if she was able to uh, remain in the incubator and still be alive, why wasn't she still why wasn't she still alive? So it's interesting what this all means that uh, Annie is likely that intervening force that comes between something, right? And uh, why would she want to kill a baby? Uh, you know, for one, it brings attention to her in the same way that she likely killed the previous people. And it brought attention to her and it and it elevated her because it seemed like when one person died she received the honors when another person died she became head of a intensive uh, care unit and the baby was likely a part of this intensive care unit and then there's a second newborn death at Eldridge County Memorial and so uh, we have two parents who lost their son 
Uh, he died quietly in his sleep. Uh, he was born seven and a half pounds. Uh, he, he developed flu-like symptoms. He remained hospitalized while, uh, while receiving antibiotics. Doc and doctors say he was improving and was scheduled to be re to be released. And then uh, the hospital report that that the ba um, that the baby died. So it seems like right when the person is improving, that's when uh, Annie sort of shuts it down, intervenes and shuts it down. And you can say the same thing about Paul Sheldon that right when it looks like he's improving that's when she decides to take a uh, sledgehammer to his uh, ankles, right? Because he's improving. She, just when he was improving, that's when she all of a sudden became depressed. And so some some depression hits her and kind of leads her into um, horrific decision-making. And then the nurses question in hospital infant death. So uh, Anne-Marie Wilkes, called into questioning concerning the death of an infant. Uh, she had joined the hospital um, earlier during the summer. She had worked at several other hospitals. Um, couldn't explain the death of the infant. The ho uh, hospital officials report that the autopsy of Michael's body revealed he died of a brain hemorrhage, but the cause of the hemorrhage is unknown. Wilkes joined the hospital um, and she had already been part of other hospitals in different states. So um, she previously worked at several hospitals throughout the country. So in New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Minnesota, North Dakota. So that lets you know that, uh, that Annie had been running. She had been running because if you, if you are still in a residency, you tend to stay at one hospital if you are starting out your career, you try to stay at that one hospital, uh, right, to gain enough experience. But to continue moving about in this way is already suspect. Um, the article doesn't tell us uh, how many years she stayed at each hospital, but it is suspect when, when you are moving from hospital to hospital, state to state. And each state has its own licensing standards. So uh, a lot of times, they do not always coordinate. New Hampshire may not have coordinated with Minnesota or Pennsylvania or North Dakota or any of the other states coordinating with, with any other state. And so uh, you can hide for a long time, uh, but somehow she's questioned. So some, there's something that she must have done in this regard. In the previous ones, um, uh, taking off the incubator, the baby was improving, something about those, um, they didn't really question her. But now she's being questioned. And so it's something likely in the way that she did what she did with the baby that revealed that there was an intervention. Intervention can definitely be po uh, positive, right? But intervention can be negative if you do something before the time, if you do something out of order, if you do something that is illegal that you are trying to uh, intervene in something, thinking that you are helping when you are actually creating uh, a, a greater problem. And then infant deaths return to hospital's nursery ward. So tragedy struck in terms of um, there uh, was found three infants, all apparent, victims of suffocation. And Annie Wilkes was retained uh, for questioning. Um, and and the other previous um, infant deaths have gone unsolved. And so this is where now Annie is really uh, being questioned. Her skill development, uh, her licensing, her nursing background, um, her work, right? And this is Rocky Mountain area. So this is likely the Denver, Colorado. And so somehow when she got to Colorado is when she hit her her um, her brick wall. Every other state did not call attention to Annie's work. When you feel like you have to suffocate, 
a baby, right? You are not truly operating in your nursing skill because for one, you take an oath like doctors, uh, I believe, to do no harm, but you are harming someone. And so if you have moved from a a point where you were supposed to be a nurse and that you're now killing babies, I don't think you really, I don't think you really are a nurse. Sometimes people get into things because they tend to have a good way of understanding something, but the execution of it might be challenging. If you have to suffocate a baby, this tells me that you don't want the job. And you either forced yourself into the job or somebody forced yourself, uh, forced you into the job, but you can't want that job wanting to kill a baby. You can't say that you love your career, you love the field, you love being of service, you love helping, you love nursing, and then also equally suffocate three babies, right? And these are three babies at this uh, now hospital versus the previous unsolved, unresolved um, infant deaths. And then we have no idea how many infant deaths are in previous uh, states. And there was like four or five states she had previously worked in. So Annie, this tells me that Annie never really wanted to become a nurse because anything that you work that hard for, you don't try to trash it. You don't try to destroy it. Sometimes people take jobs and enter fields and enter careers because they don't have any other option. They feel like they got to take a job. Uh, and people will actually go to college and learn it and, and go and do all of the residencies and rounds and things like that and, and still hate the job. How many people have you have known who uh, went to become a lawyer or went to become a doctor, but they are doing something completely opposite of that? because their parents likely pushed them into becoming a doctor or a lawyer and they got bored and depressed and tired of it and stressed and frustrated and annoyed and decided to leave that profession. You know, uh, there's this actor, um, he, I forget the types of movies he's played in. Oh, I know, he's played in The Hangover. He's an Asian actor and he, he's played in The Hangover. He's the person that they keep catch, uh, capturing or something like that. And in real life, he's actually a doctor. He went to medical school and everything, but he's not operating as a doctor. He's not functioning as a doctor. He's functioning as an actor. There is nothing in him that wants to be a doctor. And of course, I wouldn't trust him to be my doctor if he hasn't been practicing or working as a doctor, but he is actually a licensed medical doctor. And so um, so he must not have been happy in that field. You got um, other types of people who have entered uh, fields and they are not doing that thing that they were supposed to do. Um, and, you know, I think about people who are doctors who then decide they want to become a politician. The problem with that logic is, you know, they want to say, well, I want to serve my community. I want to serve my state. I want to serve the, um, you know, federal government be of service. The problem with that, however, is that your mastery orientation is in you becoming a doctor. You went to undergraduate school, you took medical school-based courses, then you attended medical school. You likely got a, another graduate degree, right? And then you did a residency program. Uh, you served at a hospital and you, you began to build your career brick by brick. And you have been in that field for 25 years or so, right? Well, that's your mastery orientation. You running for office, entering an election, running for office and winning is not a mastery orientation. Now, there, is, there may be an exception to the rule in a sense that if you did a double major or, or a minor in political science and you have actually served on city council, uh, maybe been the mayor, mayor or something like that, and you are working your way up to becoming state senator or... Um, um, federal, right? Or at the federal level, that's a little different. 
uh, you have been serving as a doctor, but you have paired it with politics, uh, basically the same amount of time that you've been a doctor. I would say 10 years might be necessary. But many people that you see who are who are doctors, who are legally licensed doctors, and who then become politicians, especially at the federal level, you can tell that they don't know what they're doing because they don't have a mastery orientation of being a politician. So they don't have ideas. They don't, uh, they just um, go with whatever flow there is because they don't have really, they think the fact that they were, uh, were um, um, a businessman, a billionaire, or um, they did well in business, that that automatically translates into serving as a politician. Uh, that cannot be, you know, further from the truth that uh, you don't have the mastery orientation. And so when you see her killing these babies, she's missing something. Annie is missing a link of something. Um, she's definitely missing the do not harm aspect of being a nurse or being in the health professions, right? Uh, she's missing that sort of screw in her head, but she's missing something else. And Annie would have been, it's, it, it's interesting, Annie might have wanted to become a novelist or a writer because she's so drawn to it and she seems to be operating outside of her mastery orientation in her dealings and engagement with Paul Sheldon. And the fact that she tries to take over uh, and tell Buster that she had been writing all of that, that uh, those pages might, 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 might suggest that Annie really wanted to become something else. If she really wanted to become something else, then that basically means Annie stayed too long. She didn't necessarily have to become a nurse. She could have become, if she wanted to be in charge so bad, uh, she just could have been, she could have become a business administrator for the hospital. And you know, with during these times, sometimes women, women had made a lot of strides. Uh, this looks like 1984. Women had made a lot of strides, but there might have been a lot of um, hindrances along the way that uh, a woman she can only really become a nurse or or there are very few who become doctors or something like that. And I'm just kind of guessing, right? I could easily take some time to research uh, this, you know, this 1984 decade, right? But regardless, she stayed too long in something that she didn't want to be in. So then you contrast that with uh, Paul Sheldon. He stayed and uh, he stayed too long in something that he didn't want to be in. He 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 doesn't he didn't want to be, make misery uh, writing the misery series his life, right? And so by the time you get to the fifth part of the series in the sixth and seventh, you have stayed too long in something that you didn't want to do. And so now he's experiencing the negative consequences of it because when you write a fifth, people are already expecting a sixth. When you write a seven, they are already expecting an eight. And so he created the ditch that he's actually in because he didn't have to create a whole series either. I understand that publishers want to know more of what you have and what you got. But if he really wanted to start off in the right way, then he should have just, you know, started off in the right way. But he has stayed in something for which he no longer wants to be in. And any, and by the time you take a pillow uh, to suffocate a baby, and maybe she was uh, using her hands to suffocate the baby's neck, by the time you are doing that, you are in something that you really don't want to be in. And so then we have this reference to Annie as being the dragon lady. She is now being arrested in the recent baby deaths and that she is behind uh, behind bars. Essentially, Annie really is a fraud. She's really a fraud. Uh, you might not think that she is because she has an actual license, nursing license, and, and you have to take uh, different uh, tests, right, and um, state-based tests, and then, of course, school-based 
uh, testing in order to get that license. But she didn't have come to the profession with the best attitude. She didn't come to the profession with the best uh, work ethic. Sure, she garnered honor, uh, honors, um, but she just could have been the kind of person who made good grades. Sometimes you can be the type of person who is just very good at schooling. You do well school-wise, but uh, when it comes to work, you struggle. And so if she's killing babies and have to, have to be arrested, they are punishing her really for being a fraud. So then you got to think about um, Paul Sheldon saying that he didn't want to make the Misery series his uh, life as being a fraud. Sure, he wrote the book. Uh, like Annie, who is very good at um, doing well in classes, he's very good at writing. He writes very well. He can create a narrative, uh, sustain a plot, you know, develop the character descriptions. He does that very well, but it's not something that he wants to do. And so that makes him a fraud in that regard. And so uh, Paul's face is really re uh, revealing just what he thinks about what he has read, what he has essentially uh, learned, that he has taken the Annie Wilkes College course and that he has, and, and this photo album is actually his textbook. And now he's really seeing what he's up against and that he didn't know all this time that he was in the kind of danger that he's actually uh, in. All right, like, subscribe, and visit. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell for more discussions. You can visit my YouTube channel for further film analysis. It's Favorites Film Analysis as the title of the channel. Uh, you can always send me an email and ask me a question, ReginaYFavorites at yahoo.com. My Overcoming Setback, Five Keys for Entering and Exiting Correction book uh, will become available around October 2021. I'm still doing some editing. The book does not focus on film analyses, but I use uh, the content that, that I created for the book to support my, um, my perceptions of setback used as a theme in select films. So when the book becomes available, I will send out a notification video audio. Um, thank you very much for visiting the channel.